me do Look what you made me do Look what you just made me do Look what you just made me do Look what you made me do Look what you Welcome back to another edition of Byro Sports Talk. I'm your host, Byro. And this edition, I'm just focusing on fantasy football, so if this runs a little quicker than the new assessed time of 30 minutes, don't be surprised. Um, as I mentioned last time, uh, I'm in a league called F oh, F F B L Fantasy Football League. Uh, another league I am in is the Northwest Ohio League, and the most presti- prestigious league I'm in is the Astastic League. And this is all ESPN. I do have some NFL leagues. Again, I'm only going to cover the ESPN leagues on here. And let's begin. So I gave you my footballguys.com rate my team, predict, or how they rated my team for the. FFBL League. So let's go ahead and start with the Northwest Ohio League, which, once again, rated by the football guy. It's footballguys.com. If you're once again interested, they will rate your team. All you have to do is give them an email, and we'll see how that works out. So let's go over my team for this one. I got Marcus Mariota, Dak Prescott, Jordan Howard. Devontae Freeman, Joe Mixon, Ty Montgomery, Demarius Thomas, Kelvin Benjamin, Stephon Diggs, Torrey Smith, Kyle Rudolph, Jason Witten, Will Lutz, the Texans, and Patriots defense. So what does David Dodds, the guy who I usually allow my reviews for, say about this team? Old school. Make no mistake about it. This team is about strength at the running back position. Emmett Smith is smiling somewhere. Nonetheless, we'd be remiss if we didn't at least mention the relative lack of strength at quarterback and receiver. These are usually survivable weaknesses, but we'd feel better if you knew or if we knew you were committed to zealously scouring the waiver wire for this year's emergent players at quarterback and wide receiver. Players we particularly like on this team include Jordan Howard, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon, and Dak Prescott. We have all these guys ranked ahead of where they are typically being drafted. So the bottom line for this league, the Northwest Ohio League, if I have great in-season management, I should have a 75% chance of making playoffs. With good in-season management, I should have 60% and an average in-season management, 42%. So let's get into some more of the summaries. We have Marcus Mariota rated as the 11th overall quarterback. So we're not even sold on him as a fantasy starter in your league. But, as the number 12 rated Dak Prescott provides you with another viable option. So the real good thing is, I have two guys who are outside the top 10 in a 10-man league as my starting quarterbacks. Dak, they can both break into the top 10 this year. They both have a good upside. Dak, less so than Marcus Mariota, I think. Only because we don't know what his second year will bring. If it's anything like Mariota and Winston, it's only going to get better. So let's keep going into it. So while the position doesn't figure to be a strength, with shrewd management and a little luck, you might end up with a decent production at quarterback. Incidentally, these two have a pretty nice combined schedule and a decent playoff schedule too. If you simply played the one with the better matchup each week, this is the schedule you'll face. Oakland, Jacksonville, Arizona, L.A. Rams, the Dolphins, the Colts, the Browns, excuse me, the Redskins, the Ravens, the Falcons, the Eagles, the Colts, the Redskins, the Cardinals, the Raiders, and the Rams. A lot of doubles and some that shouldn't be there, but they are. Nice work here at the running back position. Now we're moving on to the running back with these guys. As our projections indicate, they they will give you a combined 2.2 point per game advantage over an average opponent in this league. Our projections have Howard as the number four and Devontae Freeman as the number seven in the league. Though, if you haven't heard Joe Mixon's number three on the depth chart, they say he's he's tough to do better than Joe Mixon as my third running back. He's like 
he's a likely flex starter, and Ty Montgomery will also be among the best running back fours in the league. Wide receiver. Now, a trend I tend to have in fantasy football, for those who have played with me a long time, for those who are just starting to play, I always seem to struggle at the wide receiver position because I put so much emphasis on the running back and the quarterback position. We see both your starters at receiver as below average. Demarius Thomas is 13. And we have Kelvin Benjamin, number 23. Stefan Diggs should serve as a very solid number three, but Torrey Smith is out of his league as a fourth receiver. Now, that was kind of a stretch. Only time will tell. Again, they like to put these warnings on there. The above thoughts are generated by David Dodd's projections. Others have different takes, and then they go into a little information, but all I can say is, hey, I know this is a struggle. There will be rotating players here. I trust my own process. Tight end. Kyle Rudolph is a viable but below average as a starting tight end. We have him ranked number 10. We are also not too fired up about Jason Witten as a backup. Note that the above thoughts, once again, are David Dodds. And for some of the other comments from staff, I might as well read these. Some members of our staff have Kyle Rudolph ranked as high as fifth, which, you know, is above average first tight end. Matt Walden, one of the members of footballguys.com, defends his high ranking as follows. Rudolph benefited from a healthy year and on offense that had to rely on the short passing game. The veteran has always shown promise in the red zone, and he connected well with newcomer Sam Bradford in this respect, earning seven touchdowns. Although he may not build on his 2016 career highs in receptions and yards, look for him to reach a range of production that exceeds the work he did during the five years prior. Now, Jason Winton, again, he's ranked number 14 by some of the writers, which is above average, second tight end. Father Time is winding down on this future Hall of Famer, but he can still help in a tight end committee approach by playing weekly matchups. And that's all I can ask. <laughs> uh, kicker scenario, Will Lutz, our sixth ranked kicker, won't win the league for you, but he'll do. And between the Texans and Patriots, I should have above average production here. Great, right? So, it sounds very positive once again. I, I like my odds, of course. Um, some other notes they like for me to look into. Remember that you might have starters on by in a given week, but still have a high relative strength. This could occur because of favorable matchups, blah, blah, blah. Let's go into the actual notes I wanted to read. Sorry. Week 5 presents moderate buy issues with Devontae Freeman, Demarius Thomas, and Will Lutz. Week 8, Marcus Mariota and Ty Montgomery. Dak Prescott, Joe Mixon, and Jason Witten are out in Week 6, but your opponent will likely have comparable issues with buys. Jordan Howard, Diggs, Rudolph, and the Patriots are out in Week 9. But again, my opponent will likely have comparable issues with buys. Benjamin's out. Again, it's all comparable for those. In weeks 4, 10, and 12, you'll probably be better off than your opponent as far as buys are concerned. And I sure hope so. Now, some of the things they want me to look into. Adam Thaline, he's uh, the, the guy in Minnesota. They want me to look at Gary Coleman. Uh, Pierre Gasson, Sneed is out, Chris Hogan's one that I've thought many a times to pull up. Uh, defensively, they don't really show me any uh, tight ends. Again, I don't draft the whole team with these predictions. This is just who I picked and what I have going for me. Now... Looking at my stuff, 11, 12, running backs, 4, 7, 17, 19. Uh, receivers are 13, 23, 25th, 66. Preseason ranked, by the way. Uh, 10 and 16 for tight ends. 6 for kicker. 3 and 7 for uh, defenses. Again, this is a very traditional team, and I do mean that in every sense of the word. Traditional. Why? 
I'm a very old school person. I'm going to smash mouth football and throw over top of you when I can. And a lot of my teams have resembled that. Now, some other things. Um, sorry. So now that we're done with the Northwest of Powell, let's get to the Aztastic League. Two time, mind you, two time defending champion, Byro. Uh, this league is in its fifth year being called the Aztastic League. However, it is probably closer to its eighth, ninth, thirtieth, and tenth year. Uh, Names, I'm not quite familiar where we're at there. However, let's go over who I have. So in this league, we had one keeper. And my keeper happened to be a running back. But let's, like I did last time, let's start with the quarterbacks and with the team defenses. So quarterbacks, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott. Not too shabby. Running back, Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman, Frank Gore, Darren Sproles. Again, Sounds like a winner. Uh, wide receiver, Demarius Thomas, Michael Crabtree, Eric Decker, and Kenny Britt. Just some that might not sound like a great, solid wide receiving core. I love it because you have a number one, a number two, a number one slash two, and a number one slash two. Tight end, you got Greg Olson, Tyler Eifert. Kicker, Caro, Caro, Cairo, sorry. Cairo Santos, team defenses, the Patriots and the Giants. We think you're looking good. Uh, again, David Dobbs. We think we're looking good at quarterback and running back, and tight end is a plus for this team as well. Your squad is therefore easy for us to like. A bit of weakness at the receiver position. Shocking, but as weaknesses go, this is one that is survivable. Do I think it's shocking they say my weakness is receiver? No, that is typical of me. Uh, once again, as they say, it's survivable. It's usually relatively easy to find fill-in guys on a weekly basis until a better player emerges during the season. As long as you stay on top of things this in season, you should be among the top teams in the league. And all I can say is glorious. And for you WWE fans, you'll understand what I'm getting at. Anyways, back to fantasy football. Let's go. How will I do with my in-season management. If I was great with this team, I have an 85% chance of making playoffs. And when I go over my first week matchups, I'll show you. Show you is a strong word, sorry. I will tell you <laughs> how my team matches up to these first weeks. But anyways, 85% in this league with great in-season management. Good in-season management, I have an 80% chance of making playoffs. And with average in-season management, they're looking at a 69 to 70% chance of making the playoffs. However, here's what they say. And in any event, we wish you had the best of luck. Here's hoping all your weeks are like week four of 2013. Why week four of 2013? Darren Sproles had 142 combined yards. With two touchdowns. Drew Brees against the same team had 413 passing yards, four touchdowns. Frank Gore against the St. Louis Rams at the time, 153 combined yards with one touchdown. Demarius Thomas had 86 receiving yards with two touchdowns against the Philadelphia Eagles. And Le'Veon Bell had 84 combined yards with two touchdowns. So if I do the math, that's 11 touchdowns. That's a championship line it right there folks let's get into the summaries of my positions at the quarterback position we expect drew Brees to be a solid starter according to our projections he's the number four quarterback so you should be better off than most teams in the starting quarterback slot dak prescott who have who we have rated as the number 12 quarterback is a nice backup and could conceivably emerge as either a starter for your team or if Breeze plays as expected, some tempting trade bait for teams with, with quarterback troubles. Incidentally, Prescott has what we project as a good matchup against Green Bay during Breeze by. Perfect. Interesting thing to mention here, they bring up tempting trade bait. 
Well, now, as some people I've played with love the trade market, I, per se, am a fan of eliminating trades, trying to stay focused with the guys who I have from the beginning, and like a realistic roster, I cut and I add, and I cut and then I add. I don't trade a lot. You don't see a lot of trades normally in the NFL, unless it's the offseason. Moving on to the running backs. As we all know, I'm a running back guy, so let's get to it. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell is a great way to anchor any running back group. He's number two at the position, and by our reckoning, he gives you about a 1.7 point advantage over an average team in the first running back slot. They love Devontae Freeman as a second running back. He's a likely flex starter. Frank Gore could be an adequate, should be adequate at running back three. And Darren Sproles is a little below average. Okay, okay. Here's where I love what I'm reading. Some of the staffers have Frank Gore as high as number 15, which would make him a great third running back, even a legitimate number two. For Darren Sproles, however, he is by a lot, ranked number 42. However, Matt Walden reasons Sproles delivered 865 yards from scrimmage and four touchdowns as a solid running back three in fantasy leagues. However, leaning on him as an every week starter would be difficult because production was sporadic. And as he mentions, 12th year of his career, Sproles' time is short, and we should see him lose more and more of those carries. Again, for this league, my reasoning for drafting Spurls, currently there's no one else. Yeah, that's just how it is, but who knows? Maybe I'll pick someone up shortly. Wide receivers. We see both starters at receiver as below average. Shocking. Demiris Thomas and Crabtree. They're 13th and 20th. Definitely both number two guys in another 10-person league. We don't particularly like Eric Decker as a third receiver. Kenny Brick also f figures to be a bit iffy as a fourth receiver. Again, these are thoughts. These are not written in stone. However, some staffers have Michael Crabtree as high as number 15 because he's the one who gets the more targets, receptions, and receiving touchdowns as of last year. However, that may change moving forward. Uh, let's look as Kenny Britt is a, they didn't really talk about Eric Decker, which is no shock, but for Kenny Britt, he's sometimes ranked 32nd, which puts him in that fourth category, which would make him an above average fourth receiver. And it's because both Kessler and Kaiser are upgrades to the quarterback play Britt saw with the Rams. However, will the Browns allow Kaiser, who has been named the starter, enough time to throw? And I am banking on it, and I think Kenny Britt is a good chance that he will at least be a number two for them. Moving on, we like the choice of Greg Olson to start a tight end. We have him ranked third. He's about a .6 games better than an average tight end. We also think Tyler Eifert is starting quality tight end in this league. He's a luxury. Story of this. Last year I did trade in this league. Pretty sure I got Jason Winton. As much as Jason Winton didn't really help me out towards the end, that trade benefited me enough to go on and win the championship last year. Now, going to kicker. Cairo Santos, our seventh ranked kicker, won't win you the league, but he'll do. Now, here's the interesting thing I like. The Patriots are probably not a difference maker at defense, but they should be okay. When you don't have an elite defense, one option is a committee approach, and they have some suggestions. They want me to do either Patriots Jaguars, Patriots Bills, or Patriots Ravens. Now, personally, I like the Giants. The the Giants were my other team. They're usually a solid, solid uh, defense. Sorry, I was looking for the correct word. 
And looking at it, let's go into some of these schedule and matchup notes they have. Week 5 presents a serious bye week issue for me. Why? Breeze, Freeman, and Thomas are off. Why is that serious? Breeze is the starting number one quarterback. However, Prescott sh should be good. I can fill Frank Gore in for Freeman. However, that wide receiver spot, hopefully by week five, I have that solid number three that can fill in. Week 11 has Frank Gore and Greg Olson. But again, comparable issues. Week 9, same thing. Bell, Britt, Patriots. Week 9, comparable issues. Week 6, again, same thing. However, that's both backups. Dak Prescott, Tyler Eifert. Comparable issues. In weeks 4, 7, 8, 10, and 12, you'll probably be better off than your opponent as far as buys are concerned. Great. Now, here's where things get interesting. Recommendations. They do show some running back ones, and that's because of Darren Sproles. I think Darren Sproles might be leaving. Just looking at this, I do see a Thomas Rawls, who was named number one. Uh, anyways, there's some other decent running backs. I don't know if they're available, but maybe looking into. Wide receiver for Kenny Britt. Again, a reasonable guys right there. However, I'm a man who, with receivers, is you got to prove your worth to me. And we'll see how that works out. Tight end, I don't know why, but Tyler Eifert was listed, and they showed me a few others. But I think Tyler Eifert personally is better until he's hurt. Uh, kicker, yeah, I understand there's some other guys, but it's a kicker. I'll probably switch him in and out anyways. Uh, the Giant, for my defenses, they show some of these defenses, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them are already taken so let's go look at my comparisons my quarterbacks are in the fourth and twelfth preseason ranked uh, running backs you got the number two number seven 28th and 45th now Frank Gore's probably ranked a little low I understand the ranking however it's just because he is older he is 34 but yet he's still having 1,000 yard rushing test seasons uh, again, Darren Sproles needs to go. But moving on, receivers. Demarius Thomas is 13th, 20th is Crabtree, Eric Decker's 36th, and Kenny Britt is 45th. Now, looking at this, I think Eric Decker is right where he needs to be. The issue is will he mesh well with Marietta and will he provide after being injured all of last season? But we'll see. Oh, uh, we will see. Now, tight end, the third and seventh. Great. Kicker, seventh. Great. Defense, seventh and eleventh. Great. This looks to be another championship season. However, not counting my eggs before they hatch, let's talk about my first week matchups. What worse way than let's put me up against the guy who had the number one pick overall. Because I set the lineups, and his name is Jason Miller, the old man as his team is named. Now, looking at his team, he has Matt Ryan, LaShawn McCoy, Isaiah Crowell, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, Jimmy Graham, Texans defenses, Gauskowski as the kicker. And oh my goodness, looking at that, it's, it's dangerous. Looking at his bench with Tyreek Hill, Paul Perkins, Chris Hogan, John Brown. He is solid, solid, solid. Man, is that terrifying. However, as terrifying as his lineup sounds, who's the one who's projected to win by two points? Me. Why? <laughs> Good question. Let's look at my team specifically. The big guy who needs to perform, of course, Le'Veon Bell. Projected 24 points. Got to get those points. Everyone else, realistic expectations. Devontae Freeman's got to get 15 almost. That's realistic, but again, could be troublesome. The receivers should get their 10. Greg Olson should get his 10. The Patriots defense should get 10. 
The kicker should get roughly 10. Drew Brees is projected low at 17, but hey, he doesn't need to pick up the slack this first week, and that's good. And the only person who could switch in, they project Pres Dak Prescott with 17.8 against the Giants. I don't believe it. I think Drew Brees is going to ball out more. Awesome, though. Awesome. I hope I hope the success continues for me in that league. For the Northwest Ohio League and the other league I talked about, I face off Team Fig Newtons. The commissioner of the league, Aaron Baker, I face him off in week one. Let's look at his team. Phillip Rivers, Marco Murray, Dalvin Cook, Julio Jones, Doug Baldwin, Delaney Walker, DeAndre Hopkins again. Wow, two leagues. Uh, the Vikings defense, and Dustin Hopkins. My thoughts looks interesting. I have a little more faith in my own team. We'll see how that goes. We'll, that's all I can say is let's see how it goes. I have Dak Prescott, Freeman, Howard, Thomas, Benjamin, Rudolph, Jordan Matthews starting the Texans defense, and Will Lutz. Again, we'll have to see how it goes, but projected three points higher. Now, the t league. It was the first one I did on this footballguys.com. Now comes the fun part. Why is it the fun part? Because I'm just going to hopefully tear shreds in this league. Let's talk about the FFBL. I face off against Justin Tab in the first week. He goes by Team Tab. His team, Blake Bortles, Ty Montgomery, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Charles Clay, Pierre Garçon, the Rams defense, and Caleb Sturgis. I like some of those guys, and there's some guys I can question a lot. For example, Blake Bortles, but, you know, a little questionable. Now, looking at my team, Marcus Mariota, Jordan Howard, Michael Crabtree, Jordan Matthews, Gronk, Carlos Hyde, Eagles defense, and Will Lutz. Solid team, solid team. The big one is the projections. Now, out of all my leagues, this is probably the biggest margin, and it's 11 points in my favor. Now, can that change? Yes. I look at his bench. He has a, sorry, the Muhammad's new. He has a Dalvin Cook. He has an Amir Abdullah. He has a Deshaun Watson. He has Darren McFadden, which I would start, but I'm not him. And he has a Kendall Wright. Now, in all honesty, this is just the start of the year. We'll see how it goes. But everything looks to be in check for me. It looks like I'm going to have another decent year in fantasy football. Hopefully we'll see how that will translate. I'm sorry for the darkness in here. I forgot to turn the lights on. <laughs> uh, however, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Barrow Sports Talk. Let's also end with a few shout-outs again. At Tech Gaming, uh, Schmoogle House Productions. Uh, I believe that's all I have for now. Uh, trying to think of anything else I need to talk to you guys about this next weekend. I hope you all enjoy football, both college, both college and NFL. Uh, if you go to the high school games, enjoy those. I'm not quite back to going to the high school games. I just got done watching my own little brother play. But I'll leave it at that. Uh, once again, thank you. Thank you for those who have shared the videos, who have liked the videos. Shout out again to Jake Elling Bogan for Downtown Rams. I, I love reading your guys' stuff. I love hearing from you guys. I like that you like the page, and I like shouting out to you guys. So once again, 
check out the downtown Rams. If you're not a fan of the Los Angeles Rams, still check it out. I'm not particularly a fan, but I'm on the bandwagon this year. <laughs> However, I am always going to be a Bears fan first, so remember that. However, I do like the odds of the Rams going 7-9, 8-8, 9-7. Nine, I love that area. The games, a few games bounce their way in close ones. You can see tremendous upside this year for them. Thank you again. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you next time. This is Byron. See you next time. It's time to win!